Hey, good evening, everybody. Welcome to a uh, special CAF update, uh, pre-update, I guess, because we're pushing the CAF update to Friday. So I can have two special shows tonight, and one at eight right now, and then another one at nine. And uh, we're starting off with a Hakes auction recap. So I don't want to leave these guys in the green room too long. Uh, I actually just met one. Alex is the first guy that uh, it was the first time we've got a chance to meet Alex. And uh, welcome, yeah. Sean and Kelly, of course. So hey, you know, Alex, you've uh, like you you kind of said earlier, you're you're the you're the mission control guy. I think the man right. behind the scenes. So since since this is the first time everybody's getting the opportunity to meet you, why don't you tell us a little bit, bit about yourself and sure. uh, your time at Hakes before we get sure. into this recap? Uh, so I started at Hakes in 1985, and that was 37 years ago. Um, my one and only job. So I was a collector prior to that. Uh, comic books in the late 70s which turned me into superhero merchandise um, not long after that and started helping out a friend who had co-ops and did toy shows. And he happened to be the shipping manager at, at Hakes. So he needed help. I was ready for a job at 16. So I turned 16. I started there as a shipping assistant. And 37 years later, I worked my way up to president of the company. Dang. And, and Kelly, uh, is one of my employees, and Sean, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I put Kelly on the top row and Sean on the second row. Yeah. I told you, it's always I thought it was Pennsylvania Ohio. and Ohio. That's yeah. what I thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> no, but as, as, my, it as my first time on the show, I want to say to you, Bill, that what a wonderful platform you have. Um, I think the first time that we met Sean, I know it was at a, a New Jersey art show, but I think he mentioned you guys need to be on CAF that point we yeah. didn't really know much about it so from that it blossomed into the great relationship that it is but but more importantly just a platform for everybody to come share their artwork um and enjoy things as a collector right so many things are bringing millions and millions of dollars these days of investors investment firms and so forth and a lot of that is not us right and you can mm -hmm. see behind most of us kelly's a little sparse but um you know this is what we do right this is yeah. what we love so to be able to come in here and and post something and have comments, I can't tell you how many times we've posted auction listings and someone just come in and say, wow, what a great item. I, I can't believe you found this or, you know, so different from other social media and, and other platforms where negativity rules. This just seems like such a great environment for collectors that really want to share their passion. So I thank you for that. Okay. Well, hey, it's a uh, you know from day one, and you figure we're 19 years old now, but that was always the approach going into it. I was I still view myself as a collector, not really the caretaker of the hobby or whatnot. So I always made it, did everything the way I, I wanted it to be done, and I treated people the way I wanted to be treated through CAF, and uh, and it's paid off. You know, it really has, and I think that where whereas other places kind of devolve into you know trash talking or lots of you know the anger side of the of the hobbies that you know we we kind of are around. I think CAF has been able to keep itself very focused on, you know, the positive side of the hobby and, you know, our passion for, for collecting original art. And uh, I can't see that ever changing. And this doing this work on the channel has really even helped us out even further by just really enforcing the idea that how much we all love collecting original comic art and how important the creators are and, uh, you know, and how, how important really every aspect of the hobby is important from the collector to a, to a dealer, to a rep, to an auction house. I mean, everybody plays an important role in you know in this hobbies ecosystem and at the end of the day they, we all have to you know get along and and just you know be positive to and to an, really facilitate this hobby you know going on going forward i mean with the way the sales have been the last couple of years for most most things i think that you know it's uh i, I feel really fortunate to have calf you know as part of something that's been a part of my life for so long and, and at a time when the hobby is really at a very interesting point where it's uh, finally really getting the attention that the the artworks deserve. You know, we're seeing museum shows and those sorts of things. Stranko has a uh, show in at the, I, I forget what uh, university it is, but it's in uh, Youngstown that opens next Saturday. So, you know, we're seeing some really cool things. Alex Ross had an exhibit in Kent uh, not too long ago that just ended. Oh, really? So, so yeah, so I mean, we're seeing the medium really, you know, take, getting the, the attention uh, that it deserves that we've always seen and felt that, you know, it was worthy of. And it, it's just a just a great time to be a part of the hobby right now. Well, just to piggyback off of that, forget my story, but Higgs story, you know, started in 1967. We call ourselves America's first collectibles auction house for a reason. There were no others. For many, many years, there were no others. And in the 70s, we were offering comic books and, and original art and sports cards and things before 
others existed, right? And that's only carried on now into modern day. We're doing video games and we're doing Pokemon. So we kind of keep up with the times, but we've always been about anything that is pop culture or historical. We wanted to represent that not only at auction, uh, but we've written 20 different price guides and uh, countless articles and so forth. So we're very much in the history of the items as well as the history of what they sell for, but but mm -hmm. sort of the origin of where they are. And, and that's why we do uh, feature collections. I know Kelly mentioned some of the collectors last time, Gene Seeger and so forth. It's important to get the story out of somebody that spent a lifetime collecting this stuff in the way that they did, with the passion that they did. And and we want to carry that legacy on, right? So we're not just selling objects and, and, and trading goods, but we're passing on a, a historical important item from one person to another. Exactly. And uh, Alex, I heard that you're you're a bit of an art collector and that uh, I don't know if you'd ever be open to doing an interview one you know, sometime in the future, but I'd love to talk about uh, your art collection. Just, Never. just you know. Never. No, no just kidding. <laughs> no, Kelly, Kelly's already talked to me again. We talked off here. I'm not the technology guy, not, not the new technology guy, right? My technology is a turntable. So uh, Kelly has already talked to me. He's going to help me get uh, my artwork on the site. And also Todd Sheffer, who worked for us, who was an art yeah. collector. Both of us would like to do that. So we just got to line it up. It will happen in the near future for sure. Great, great. All right, well, why don't we talk a little bit about the recap? So uh, I, it was a successful auction, I imagine. I mean, most, you know, I, th I think that, uh, I think prices were a bit higher than uh, your early estimates on most things. So I didn't get, uh, you know, like an overall summary maybe of like, I assume most lots closed successfully. Uh, you know, I didn't really get, a lot of times when I do a recap, I'll have maybe a total sale amount. So I'm assuming that for you guys, this was a strong original art auction, at least as far as that segment of, of the, all the lots and categories that were out there. This was a pretty, pretty high volume one for you. Correct. Yeah, the entire auction, which was nearly 2000 items of which 300 or so were art. I mm -hmm. had a 97 percent sell rate over over those 2000 did then total auction did 3.2 million. Uh, the catalyst behind the success was Star Wars. And, and that's a testament to, to Kelly's hard work and, and knowledge of that area. That did 1.2 million of the 3.2. Wow. Political was strong too. Uh, political campaign memorabilia did about 800,000. Art came in around 500,000 or so, um, but very strong prices across the board for the, the smaller uh, section of art. In fact, I said, what did I say, Kelly? 300 items. There was really 100 items, wasn't it? That yes. was in art in, in, in general. So, um, but we were very, very pleased with the results. Many exceeded our expectations. We'll get into some of the individual pieces, but uh, no, strong across the board and art was certainly part of the success of this auction. Yeah, I don't want to toot my own horn, but I got one price right in my guesses before the auction. I was way off every other, every other <laughs> was all, but I got one right. So, Well, how many guesses did you make? I, and then we'll judge you based on that it, since you only got one 12, right at least 12 it was yeah, not, right, so eight percent success no. rate is not i'm an art expert but no seriously he's a he's a big part i mean we don't we just don't get a piece of art in and throw it out there and say here it is we do research uh we make sure it is what it is we look at comps we kind of come up with an estimate that we think is is fair now it can off, oftentimes be exceeded and that's fine as well mm -hmm. but kelly will have a price in mind i will sean will Todd, I mean, we we kind of are all the sounding board. And look, if we're wrong and the estimate was low, great. And uh, and if not, okay, we, we gave it our best shot. But um, no, Sean, Sean is uh, very, very important in that whole process. Just today, I sent him some pictures of things and, and got prices from him. So it's very much a team effort. Yep, we try to we try to be conservative for the consigners standpoint and also get them excited too. It's kind of a got to kind of do that dance with them right yeah luckily I mean, with the way the market is now we're almost off we've i've been lower more often than i've been the other way around which is uh, refreshing well and, and you know he talks about a dance we we do have to do a dance we have we have two partners right we've got bidders and we've got consigners and and how do you make them both happy very difficult mm -hmm. a, a bidder wants it as low as possible a consigner wants it to sell for as much as possible so uh an auction house does not have an easy job um but we feel that we do you know as good as anybody in representing the art getting out there for the consigner and then also presenting it in the right way for the bidder that they're comfortable with what they're bidding on, um, happy with how we present it and, and then, you know, put up for auction and see what happens. 
So do you, uh, I mean, I've never consigned anything to an auction house, just so you guys know. So from uh, from that perspective, typically are the consigners asking for what you feel the value is on the artwork or, or anything in general what, when they give it to you? Or do they kind of go into it, just get me, get me the best that you can get? I mean, nine right. times, I'd say nine times out of 10, value is discussed. Yeah. Whether they have an idea of value before it comes to us. And we just agree on it immediately. Some people... Um, are complete amateurs whether they're inherited something found something have had something for 45 years had no idea what it was worth um well it's it, very rarely was someone just hand a piece over that's worth what we realize is fifteen thousand dollars or any any amount really um without getting deep into it or, or at least alluding to it but it's it's, it's never uh it's never an unknown and, and it, but it's also, it is, it's never an unknown, but it is an unknown because it's original piece of art. You know, it's one of a kind. So we t can say it has an estimate of 10 to 20,000, which is what we said on, on two pieces that are going to come up here that one went well beyond that. Um, because it is, it's the only one. Mm -hmm. and that's, that's the, 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 of all the things we sell, that's what makes us the most, the most exciting is it's the only one. It's, uh, the, you, you can have a collector who's been waiting for this one page cover to come up and they have they've had no idea where it was for 25 years and all of a sudden it's here and you know they get excited so it's um it's the one it's one of the places where the value is the most difficult to assign i, I think everyone would, would would agree with that well, definitely today yeah. well today's today's especially if if we're offering the same piece again even five years apart we really can't go by that mm -hmm. price five years ago so yeah, it, I mean it, that's like what what were we saying? COVID years is like it's like not it's like seven years, eight years, it, or one one. So it's a, it doesn't matter if it was pre-COVID. It just it's uh it, it might, it might as well be a decade ago. Mm -hmm. uh, how it's very so did uh, you guys have a late night <laughs> with, the, with the way the bids got extended on some items? It was a it was one of the latest in a while. Not because of art though, because of Boba Fett, but. If we're sitting around watching a fig, an action figure up to two hundred four thousand, we'll stick around till twelve thirty at night. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. It was a it was a late one. We were. Uh, it's it's always a long, exciting week. You feel like you went through battle, but it's very exciting at the same time. It's, it's just we're all pushed to the edge just because of how how long we're here. But it's it's all it's. I I'm obsessed with the bids. I'm obsessed seeing what what things are going to do and. I know I have consigners. I've had a lot of, I, had, I actually had one consigner um, of many different great things I said afterwards. The only, the, the, the email the following day was wow, period. And that was it. And that's what we like, you know, yeah. right. But, but, Completely you know, blown away. Everything was fantastic. And they had no, no more words. Kelly well, the night of the auction home. is, it's the culmination of four months of work, worth of work, really. I mean, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. From, so. yeah, it really does from, from one auction forget our online auctions or our specialty auctions or whatever, but the main catalog auction we, we do three times a year, it really is a four month process of one ends. We start right into the next one, getting the items, cataloging the items, getting it to the printer, getting it online. It's, it, it's a lot more involved than many people think or realize, you know, we, again, we just don't throw an item out there. A lot goes into putting out the catalog first and foremost, right? Because not everyone does a catalog, but we feel it's necessary and we take great pride in our catalog. But also getting it online, it, it's a lot, a lot of hours. Uh, mm -hmm. And just, to, you know, Kelly hates when I do my angry old man and, and say, here's how things were in the past. But as long as they might go now, these auctions, they used to go way longer pre-internet. When we were just doing phone bids, we would start one half at nine in the morning and we will be there till nine, 10, 11 the next morning. It will go 24 hours plus because the phone calls will come in from the East Coast, then the West Coast, then overseas, then start over. So he's got it easy. Don't ever forget that, Kelly. You've got it easy. Thank you. I appreciate that. That's, that's, that's I bet you get thanks. reminded about this every once in a while. Yeah, it's, your it's, right, Kelly? It's thanks, thanks to you because you you started here when I was born, the mm -hmm. same year. So that's that. It's, and you're it's still all, in diapers. Thank you. All right, we, let's move on to feel the, the love uh, in the room the, tonight, everybody. The, the recap. I, think I treat him like a son. It's a it's a good time to to get onto the to the actual items. Yes. Hey, D Before we do, Dino said that uh, Sean's uh, cap red skull poster is awesome. That's actually that's a painting, by the way. That's oh, that's a, a painting. This man. one's poster, that one's painting. Yes, but thanks, Dino. I really appreciate it, man. 
That's Dino's awesome. on the show. It's at nine. We're showing off some secret pieces from Dino's collection that he's yes. never shared with anyone before. Yeah, he's got some killer stuff. Yes, he does. Across the board. All right. Well, let's start this recap. So uh, this is in the order that you guys kind of sent it to me. So first up is that Incredible Hulk 283 cover by Ed Hannigan. And I did email Ed Hannigan, Kelly, and I did not get an answer back. So uh, I appreciate that. If, if I ever do, I will let you know what he has to say. Man, we name dropped and everything. Nothing. <laughs> and uh, I tried. I mean, the, it, luckily, it's a, it's a, the winning bidder is somebody who I can, uh, who would, who, he would be thrilled to hear, what the, you know, he's, he's, he's going to be thrilled as it is, but he would, he's somebody who I, I, I know would love to hear, um, <clears throat> anything else about it. So, if you, if he has the um, time of day to get back to you, which I hope he does, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, I will certainly let you know if I, you know, as far as. If he knows anything about who may have colored these, but uh, but a strong price for this one. I mean, I don't. Yeah, this uh, is one. You know, our, our the highest piece of art we had in auction, and one that we had at ten to twenty thousand, and it did mm -hmm. thirty three thousand. You know, when it came in, we were sort of, at least I was, and, and again as an art collector, it w wasn't thrilled that it was colored, but at the same time, this is it, right? So you 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 just have to accept it, and it really had no bearing on the price in the end. That's awesome. Um, you know, we, we, and we, we do comps not only before, but after, right? So to see how things do. So uh, this is, as far as we could tell, and other people would chime in as they always do, and not every auction house has results that you can easily search, right? But from what we could tell, this is the most ever paid for this art team. Uh, there was a Milgram cover with Kirby that sold for more. Uh, mm -hmm. That was just recently a GI Joe cover, uh, Ed and Jansen, that sold for much more. But right. this was a very, very strong price for them as a team or removing those two pieces for either one of them uh, working on the cover. So uh, again, didn't really get lost uh, in our auction of a hundred is pieces of art, maybe somewhere else it might have, but one thing we do, and I know Kelly has preached is we do kind of curate every section of the, the uh, auction, whether it's political or art or whatever, and just try not to put too much in, overwhelm the bidders, um, you know, take away from the consigners if there's too many pieces fighting for dollars. Sometimes they're penalized. So I think what we did this time was we hit the right amount of art and this being one of the key pieces really took off. Yeah, and going back to that dance, you know, some of that some of that's dictated by what the consigner wants. If they demand that they put your whole collection in, then sometimes you got to acquiesce to that. Absolutely. But if we can, we'll be as strategic as we can because I do want to be – it's not just about being – in the market but being different in the market one of the things hakes tries to do is we try to be personal we try to uh do things to where it puts an accent on your pieces and like alex it doesn't bury it so i think that might have done well in this piece's regard and this is one of them where i thought with the painting i, I you know it in comps being what they are as kelly said with you know post COVID, i figured this would be in the low 20s range as what i was expecting mid 20s uh to go 10 grand beyond that was it was a pleasant surprise it was nice to see and i understand why i did i mean you got you got too many characters all great characters the composition's good and it's that perfect vintage era that seems to be exploding right now that late bronze early yeah stuff. so i understand all of it i, I know why it happened yeah i think it, it uh colored or not i think it brought what it was what, it, what it's worth you know i think if it would have brought Actually, it's a good question, Sean. Would it have, what what would it being it brought this? What would it have brought if it wasn't painted? I don't know because it, it threw my comp way out of the water. I don't know. I, mean, I think I think you know before. Uh, let's, okay, so before the auction happened, before this comp existed, I would have said the price that you see right now is what I would have expected it without the painting. Possibly because it's got I mean, so yeah. many other characters on it. Maybe it gets to forty forty five. That would have been the top ceiling, in my opinion. Uh, you know, but my brain is is still. I'm trying to I'm trying to evolve quickly, but my brain still goes back to stuff that I was seeing. You know, I usually I have like a six to nine month window where I'm trying to price things based off comps like that. So my mm -hmm. expectation would have been somewhere in the mid century mark, uh, and the, the fact that mm -hmm. it almost got there with the painting kind of again speaks to the strength of the market and the fact that people recognize that this is a it's a key era Marvel piece with. A lot of characters that you could ask for a lot of key characters you know it's not like it's not it's not d man on the cover in the background it's they're all a listers or, yeah. or b plus listers 
Yeah, I'm a D-Man fan, by the way. I'm a cap guy, so if you're a D-Man collector, don't don't take offense. <laughs> but no, it's a great cover, and, you, and you're right. Some people would say that uh, you know the painting, uh, you know, it being colored would uh, lower the value of it, and you know that may that may be true. I don't I don't know if it's going to really detract a great deal. Again, it's back to it's one of a kind. So, yep. uh, but you're right. I mean, could it could it have gone a little bit higher? You never know. I mean, uh, it's it, it's really hard to say. It's back to uh, you know. You, you, you need just need two people going after something to, to drive the price up. But still, this was a was a strong price for it. Uh, but it's indicative of what we see in the market, right? I mean, a couple mm -hmm. years ago, you might have said this was only going to be, you know, 13 to 16. 18, 13, 18, exactly. I 100% yeah. agree. Yep. And, and I yeah, agree Jeff, with Jeff's correct. They did a good job. And also, I don't want to ignore Stanley's question. Right. Oh, yeah, I was going to. Yep. yep. Yeah, I can take that if you want. Sure. Uh, and so the answer is yes. And it's it's in our rules. We are all collectors. Uh, employees allowed to bid. They bid blindly, like everyone else. They do not know what is, uh, other bidders are bidding. And but we cannot bid. No employee can bid, or no consigner can bid on their consignments. But as far as collectors, yes, we are, and we can bid. Yeah, yeah. I mean, every auction has, has also different lose. policies. That's for sure. What's what's that, Sean? He said, in my case, we can also lose when we bid. Yeah, <laughs> it's more often than not, unfortunately. I, I didn't. This was the first auction, and I don't know how many years that I did not win one piece. Yeah, is that so, right? I didn't know that. Yeah. No. Mm -mm. Yeah, you're you're a, a strong collector too. So that's that 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 shows the market right there. You say first ever? You mean 1985 ever? <laughs> uh, no, no. First in a long time. Not okay. not. If I said first ever, no, no. I might have first, heard first in many yeah. many years. Right. No, 1985, when I first started, I wasn't bid on anything. I didn't have any money. Yeah. <laughs> I was buying stuff at flea markets, man. Yeah, that's where most of us started, actually. Mm -hmm. But uh, all right, so next up, we got another uh, another cover here by Hannigan. And this one was at uh, just under 17 and a half with the win with the, for the winning bid, nine bids on it. Uh, what was the estimate? Oh, 10 to, 10 to 10 20. 20. Yeah. Yep. This is the one that I called, by the way. I'm going to toot my own horn. Well, you know, I figured 15 this. to 18 on this one. What's funny about this, unless unless I have my facts wrong, but I know early on, this was looked at way more than the other one on CAF, correct, Kelly? Uh, I can tell you that in two seconds. I, I, I thought that's I, I believe you know, you're correct. the first yeah. couple weeks it was. So it had it made many more views. And in the end, the other one went out dollar wise. Oh, yeah, it was double. It was almost double the amount of views on, on, on CAF. Mm -hmm. Um so it's just so you, uh, so you pay attention to those sorts of things that's cool i mean you know i never even thought about something like that but you that's that's cool you, i mean but i assume you probably have similar metrics from your side of the yes. spectrum too yeah okay yeah. Tell yeah. Tell you, i love statistics and i analyze things to death it, probably too much i'm going into that auction seeing where we're running behind and bidders or bids or whatever and 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 panicking and throwing things kelly will tell you and, yes. and, and and then I'm then I'm happy after all. Yeah, I have I have to get a, a a larger shield every day. We get closer to the auction ending. Just block <laughs> the things that are being thrown. It's uh, but that's it's 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 um, he's like he like like you said he's sitting in the in the uh, the captain's behind chair. The mission control. I'm behind mission the curtain. Control. Behind the curtain. Yes. Mm -hmm. The curtain is now taken away. Kelly is Dorothy, and I'm the wizard. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, we gotta have a have a have a have a conversation at some point, Alex. <laughs> this is gonna be a fun one, I can tell. But you know, it's Spider Man, so you, clearly, I would think the Spider Man cover is gonna probably garner more eyeballs on Cap, just because it's gonna come up in searches mm -hmm. more when people are looking. You know, mm -hmm. irrespective of the artist name on it, once they see a Spidey cover, that, that it's gonna draw more eyeballs. Um, I mean, the you know the Hulk cover is better just because it has you know all the characters that it's got on it, right? I mean that that's uh, that was a strong attraction there, and would would be why it you know, realized a bit of a higher price than this one, but still, you know, it's, it's, it's a great cover and uh, nicely painted as well, as Jeffrey mentioned earlier on the other piece. Yep. You the signer was happy though, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, oh, yeah, they, they can, they can sign this one called me and they were, they were uh, nothing but compliments on, on how everything was handled, presented. Um, yes. They were very happy. And this was something that was new to the market. Uh, where they uh, they stumbled upon these, uh, they, it's not like something where they they collected it for years and they uh, reached out to us and you know I guess they liked what we had to say and and we have been proven that <clears throat> we can we don't just uh, have empty words. It's um, you know we 
we presented it well and they had great results. And then in this particular cover, <clears throat> it I mean immediately it looks like Doc Ock in the background because you you see the the, the tentacles and that's that if, if only if it were him. But uh, it's this is the robot master, right? Is that right, Sean? Yeah. Yes, it is. Anyway, but uh, I'm not sure you want to ask uh, Sean what the characters are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, don't do that again. <laughs> <laughs> just get Kelly. I had to get you Man. too. <laughs> <laughs> you notice I was mum. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Zip. Anyway, uh, no, this is a this is a, they they were both great covers from the from the same I'll call it same find. Um, not a lot of history behind them, but they obviously there is some sort of a coloring history behind them, and maybe one day we'll all learn what that was. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. So. All right. Well. Good, good price on that one. I'm glad the consigner was happy. So mm -hmm. uh, next up, we have that uh, Metamorpho cover. Let's see, it went for twenty five thousand one hundred twenty nine dollars. Yep. What yeah, was, was your estimate on this one, Sean? It was somewhere in the high teens. Well, then it, it exceeded the, your. It was the the rarity factor of having you know '60s large art cover, and they're like Kelly touched on in the preview. He, metamorpho covers alone you just don't see but just the fact of having any main title marvel or dc cover from the 60s and larger you just don't see it so that's a it's a it's a wild card every time and this is one that we did a little bit of a larger range kelly and i sort of thought maybe five to ten uh sean thinking ten to twenty so we made it a, a five thousand to twenty estimate normally it's five to ten or ten to twenty but mm -hmm. we did a kind of a slash and and it even exceeded that. <clears throat> and that was this based on the fact that there are are no comps. There's there's nothing at least in the auction in the, in the in the public auction world that we could see. There is there there are only 17 issues. So it's, and I'm not surprised at all that there are no comps. And then now there is one. And I I, I think it made it yeah it it had every right to go beyond our our estimate. And I'm I'm I'm, I'm happy it did. So. That's a beautiful cover. It's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's just well done. Yeah. yeah the repeating image is, uh, is really great for the motion. Yeah, that's great. I wonder if Dino was an underbidder, if there was someone above that even. You would think there have to be with somebody that it, the jump was too much. So I'm mm -hmm. guessing there were a few more above it. Yeah, yeah. I think there were. Yeah. Well, great pickup for whomever got it. Uh, yeah, thanks, Dino. Cool. All right, let's see what's next here. Oh, the famous funnies, of course. Let's see by Mike Roar. <clears throat> this one, of course, is pretty rare, rare find. I didn't even have a guess on this one. I'm not going to pretend. I, we, I had no way to predict to try and come up with. Yeah, yeah. This was another one where it was it was the the comps weren't there. That the artist was uh, someone who was working on famous funnies prior to Frazetta, and they brought him back in to. Uh, uh, Phil to <clears throat> fix Frank walking, you know, pretty much storming out of the room mm -hmm. and came in and, and, and did a great cover. So it, it's a it's more the art than the artist and, and the rarity and the story behind this cover being replaced. And it had, it's had a, a, a lot going for it. Um, and Buck Rogers covers, period, don't exist. I agree. You just you think about it. Let, let's say. I own this in my living room. I, I would talk about everything you just mentioned. Like the art's cool. It's got that atomic age vibe to it, but it's got a little fantasy mixed in. Then you can start talking about the Frazetta angle. It's just a it's a mm -hmm. cool conversation piece outside of the fact that it's great mid-century American art. And it's huge. It's it's, it's also twice up. So it, <clears throat> it fills it will fill a frame and it'll it'll be a it'll be a great piece for the wall for sure. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's amazing. I love I love artwork from this period. So you know, I'm a big sci-fi fan. So Buck yeah, Rogers and anything like this is just yeah, you know, I love it. Yeah, I'm not it, sure how long it was a privilege that, to see how long Gene time. had it, but he must have had it for a long time. Yeah, I'm thinking knowing Gene because again he goes back before I've worked here, um, but knowing Gene, I think most of his art he got in the 70s into the early 80s after that he was buying more toys and premiums and things i think the art came early on and mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah, that photo of him is, is uh i think it's from the 60s 70s mm -hmm. era of him surrounded by other art 
So yeah, he, he bought that early. Excuse me, he bought that early on. Right. Yeah, I remember looking at that photo when we had you guys on for the preview. That was pretty mm -hmm. cool. All right, so yeah. twenty six thousand seven hundred dollars on that yeah, one. That's we're and it. <clears throat> it's always a good thing. Yes. So uh, let's see what's up next. We've got the uh, oh the Secret Wars page. Now this one ended, uh, I guess, closer to the lower end of your estimate, but uh, just over twenty thousand dollars. Let's go in on that one. <clears throat> this one was nice a wild page. card, I think. Yeah. As far as uh, getting the estimate figured out, it's uh, yeah, yeah, it's a tough one. Yeah, it's it's always hard to tell you on st something like this. You wonder if the uh, you know the, the faded inks is a little bit of a detractor on it. Um, it definitely is, and that's that that's I'm, I'm hesitant. I don't want to I don't want to talk about that because obviously it's a it's a great piece. It's Zach and right. Captain America. It's Secret Wars, but it, it the the fear is and I, I don't see it happening with this because of the the way the rest of the inks have held up but it's the it's the starlin death of captain marvel effect that you see on a lot of that stuff that it each it, it, it kind of goes into people's minds uh yeah. i don't believe that's again i don't i'm looking at this piece i think that this piece right here will stay locked in and this i think is what you're going to see in 20 years from now with this uh i'm curious about that too but the bottom line is everybody wants Dark Knight Returns, everybody wants Watchmen, and everybody wants Secret Wars, and there's only so many pages to go around. So, right. somebody well, I mean, won this piece, and it's a blue chip piece for their collection for however long they want to keep it. It's amazing. Right, right. Well, at the end of the day, $20,000 today is a lot more money than this page would have fetched three years ago. You know, and probably you know. a lot less of what it's going to be if the if the trend right. continues. So it's right. So I'm not saying twenty thousand is a you know is something we should we should think is a bad price at all. I mean, yeah, it is. No, you, you buy it when you see it with these because it's 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 just like oh I I wish I would have bought a Moon Knight six months ago. <laughs> Good luck with that now, buddy. It's just <laughs> so Sean, you know, we we talked a, a little bit about this. Say this comes up for auction before the three million dollar page from this issue. It brings less, or that had no impact on things. I, I think it I think that it absolutely impacted it to the positive yes mm -hmm. I would yeah, say I so too I would no, say honestly. half I say it would about half yeah my guess would have been I, I'm with Kelly I think somewhere between 10 and 15 my gun in my head I'd say 12 5 somewhere in there yep it, it brought it it brought it 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 to light and it brought the bidders to it yeah I so think. good so thank you auction house in Texas for raising the price of this one yes yes yeah. that will, yeah. will go unnamed yeah Cheers. Thanks. But uh, but no, I would agree because I would have said like you know three or four years ago that page would have been a four to five thousand dollar page. That's I got to say this too. Best, it's you know the nerd in me. Whenever I see them cutting from the stat camera, I'm always happy when they don't cut the. Sh it's a secret part because that's mm -hmm. the coolest part about these boards. Right. I, lo I love the Secret Wars boards. All right. Next up, we've got uh, the Vampirella. And this one went for twelve thousand two hundred thirty-six by Enric, and uh, it was in within your estimation. This I know was. You've had it. Go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna say I know you had one, uh, one or two pieces in the last auction as well. I think they did pretty, pretty well too. Yeah, we had three from the same person. Uh, that this did better than the last two. I think we were just under this one, like eleven thousand and maybe eight thousand for the other two. Mm -hmm. uh, all of them were equally impressive. So it, you know, any one could have been. The top seller this ended mm -hmm. up being the one but i mean if you see these in person they're just amazing they're they're humongous and the the colors are so beautiful and the detail is incredible uh we, that's why one of the reasons we do some of this stuff full page in the catalog to really emphasize the size the detail uh and this was this was one of those pieces mm -hmm. right i mean this thing was what three and a half by five feet so uh yeah. very large painting nearly life-size for her yeah oh, well a good pickup I, i'm a huge fan of enric let's see what do we got here all the crazy little comics <laughs> i remember this was this was a funny one of course and uh, let's see what was the final price on this one seven thousand six hundred and seventy dollars so it's above your two to five thousand dollar estimate mm -hmm. wally wood of course but this is one that when when kelly uh was offered it he showed it to me and I was way more excited than, than he was. Um, and, and said, you know, here's another one. It, it was, it was hard to predict. So, but 
I think I said you can correct me, Kelly. I think I said I won't be surprised if it hits five thousand or so. You said you did say that because I I had saw that this exact piece had actually sold at auction. Uh, I could look here. Uh, not that long ago, five seven years ago, for fifteen hundred. Wow. I believe. Is, is but again, you know, a different time depending on where it was in that auction and so forth. Right. And we made it right. more prominent in, in I mean, this auction. I didn't need a comp when I saw this exact piece sold at auction, and I. I assumed the, I was hoping the market had gone up since then, and obviously it did. It did. I'm a big Wally Wood fan, and and this spoke to me with the the DC characters and so forth. So, I, yeah. I just I I like. I mean, it's not an official DC cover, right? But it's still a DC right. cover, it, it, mm -hmm. depending on how you look at it. So that's uh, hilarious. I mean, yeah. it it, it uh, yeah, it's not a as great, it's a great cover. Not as funny as his DC poster. But, yeah, I, I mean not DC Disney Disney, Disney sorry yeah. Disney, Disney, Disney if anybody knows that this this actually would have gone well right there if it would have been yeah. in your right right next to it in in your uh that may or not be hanging in your office maybe yeah so so Alex and when we did the preview we of course had two uh faux pas that that we did of course yes. John will never be able to live down the secretary comment correct but the other one was talking about <laughs> the other, the other one was, yeah. None of us were were hip to uh, to Wallywood's DC yeah. career. If you would have been in in the chat with us, you would have set us all straight, right? You would have oh, absolutely. In, yep. in fact, uh, both of uh, Kelly and Sean got pink slips uh, after that <laughs> yeah. next episode, and they begged for their jobs back. What, what's worse too is I called it too. I was like, oh, I'm, like I knew as I said, like he he created Power Girl, dum dum. I know. There's a reason I'm on this show. There's a reason I'm on the show tonight. I, I got to make right. sure things are. Yeah, I, it's kind of like, you know, when, uh, I feel better now that you know that with you in the in the <laughs> studio with us too. I, it, look, I was if I knew how to comment. I was, I was watching an episode. I would have commented, but again, you were throwing was, stuff, weren't you? You were throwing things around. Uh, it was not a pretty scene. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm the one that said Kelly went that path because I, I sort of have forgotten all about that. And I said, oh, my gosh, Wallywood, D.C., this is incredible. So I planted the seed. So I, I'll take full responsibility for that. All right. Well, hey, we, we, we'll be happy to have you as part of every uh, preview and recap that we do in the future so that we don't make those kind of mistakes. I'm not ever sure again. Kelly wants that, but OK. <laughs> we'll, we'll just have to get, you know, butter him up, get him excited. It's fine. Um, Here's all the flash pages. These things, these things just performed. See that? Yeah. So these these are all the flash results, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That... Yeah. And this was another when these were offered to me. I went to Sean right away. We sort of hashed out what we thought the prices would be. I went to Whoa. the consigner. They Whoa. were they were thrilled at what we came <laughs> up with, which was way way less than what this added yeah. up. To. Um, I figured I figured for most of them they'd be hovering right around five grand uh three to five was my you know general estimate we were glad you were wrong sean yeah for sure i'm sure but a consigner really he was and this is a person that had um, a great story for hakes right someone that consigned comic books to us 10 years ago mm -hmm. uh, and then came back and said hey i had a great experience i remembered you i have these pages would you want to sure and and now after this um we come to find out that there's a pretty substantial marvel silver and bronze age comic book collection that they have that that we're working on so mm -hmm. again keeping those relationships going having a good experience it all pays off an end and and um everyone's sort of very thrilled with what these did and and the, obviously the winning bidders are happy too right mm -hmm. yeah I, gotta, this, I agree it's as i'm looking at these i'm getting the similar vibe that i got with the science fiction cover it's just you're looking at it, it feels like a privilege these are these still exist it's it's a bygone era. You can feel it when you're looking at them. They're, it's fantastic art. It's it's twice up. And Infantino was a design master. Plus, he created the character. Everything about it's super cool. Like, I, I'm glad to see them hitting price points that I think they deserve. Yeah. Yeah, these are beautiful. This was the full story, right, Alex? Yeah, for, uh, for chapter two, all five pages. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Well, congratulations to the consigner and the people who picked up pieces yeah, from that. Yeah. Jealous. All right, let's see. What do we got next here? Oh, the Kurt Swan <clears throat> Superman page. This one went for $5,581, almost three times your high end estimate. So here's an example of I know last show someone asked, did we think that 
there were too many swine pages in, in that auction. Mm -hmm. And, and we said, no. And again, this is something that we curate is a word we use a lot. So from this collection, there were actually twice as many pages as we ran. We ran 19 or 20 single pages and a full Clark Kent story. And I had pared that down. I looked at all the pages and I systematically picked different ones from different stories, um, different content, so on and so forth, that I thought it wasn't too much. Had it, it probably would have been too much had I taken all of them at once, right? But I didn't. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was also a consigner that was new to us, that wanted to see what we would do. So in the end, over the moon with the prices that we got for these and the color guides that we had from him as well. And just today arrived another batch of 10 pages from this uh, sort of era, the 70s era, some of the same issues, different pages, of course, and more mm -hmm. color guides and probably more mm -hmm. to come after that. So here's here's where everything happened correctly. We did the right amount of pages. The bidder showed up and it was an, uh, the results were enough to make the consigner happy and want to come back to Higgs. It's perfect. I yeah, I always, you always, I always get worried when I see, uh, you know, a lot of the same pages from the same artist going out at the same time. It's, uh, at least I would be worried, you know, as a consigner. So it's, I think it's always better to kind of meter them out. You know, don't, don't saturate the market all at one time, but, uh, you definitely did the right thing there. Well, look, we always know there's another auction coming up, right? So if the consigner right. isn't in a hurry, why should we? True. So here is, uh, let's see, what we, oh, this is a complete story by Kurt Swan here. And what was the final price on that? 3,383, so uh, about 50% over your, your high-end estimate. That's good. Oh, Bill, you said you were uh, awaiting a swan. Did you take a swing or? I have not yet. No, 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 by, you know. Soon should be soon. That's right, I'm gonna keep bugging you until you get. It. <laughs> I agree, it's iconic. I know. I mean, it's it, it drives me crazy how how incredible Swan is as, as a as an artist. I mean, he was just made to to draw Superman. You know. Like I said, we got ten more coming up, and, and I just happened to have on my desk. Here's one of those. There it is, a little preview. Oh, here, let's uh, go full screen here. There the you Higgs, go. The Higgs July auction preview. Look at that. Oh, that's a great. That is that's that's. that's one. Yeah. Here's one. There you go. No, that's a really nice page. Nice. And you get baseball in there. Wow. That's all you get. Sports fan. Like <laughs> that's the tease. <laughs> Look for him on calf soon. And like Sean said, you can take a swing at that page. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That was an unintentional segue, but I'll take it. <laughs> all right. Okay. Plus one for Sean. <laughs> uh, another Kurt Swan. This is from uh, Superman 281. Mm -hmm. This one did and well. Seventeen hundred and fifty-six dollars. So right, right in your estimate window. Another great page. That's the uh, Sean Connery esque figure. I mean, the collector these came from. He had the right eye. They, he didn't have a bad page. He really went for great content. So even if it was a you know, minor character, no character at all, Superman was doing something that caught your eye on every one of these pages. Right. No, that's a beauty. All right. And another swan from, uh, let's see, Superman 292. This one went for 1500 and 50% uh, above the high end estimate. So that's mm -hmm. always good. Let's see, taking a swing there as well. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just great detail on this stuff. And I never read Superman. I hate to say it, but uh, not a single story, or just in general. You mean like not? A, it wasn't uh, I mean, you know, if it was around, I mean, I, I had uncles that read DC, so I, I would I would pick them up and read them. But I just never really got into to DC at all. Unfortunately, I mean, it's just sorry to say. Uh, let's see, but but I'm, I maybe I'll be able to make up for that in my later years. But yeah, that's a you know the whole page is awesome. I love it. Jeff yeah, called that. It's an origin page. It's cool. Yeah. And another one. <coughs> what was this one? This was at uh, $1,300. So double your estimate, high end double estimate. estimate. 
and we can't betray the the buyers but i'm curious just as a collector how many of these went to the same because it came from the same collection did it now go to the same yeah, that's collection, a good question I, I, didn't really, yeah, I didn't really i think these spread out pretty well i yeah, cool. uh without looking at all the numbers i'm pretty sure these um <clears throat> there was there were fights pretty serious fights throughout the entire yeah, i knew we had plenty of bidders but I, I, yeah i didn't look to see how many different winning bidders mm -hmm. yeah, i gotta say we superman stuff at hakes just it does it's strong every time we got a, mm -hmm. we got a lot of a lot of bidders it's cool to see well that's a byproduct of not only our art collectors but you know again we've been selling superman stuff since the 70s premiums and so forth yeah. so mm -hmm. we have superman collectors and we have art collectors and we have comic book collectors and, yeah. and sometimes we'll have a political collector it's not unusual for someone to buy a kennedy poster and a superman item you know right. in fact the action comics cover that we had with Kennedy on it. We got 112,000 for a number of years ago. That guy was a comic book collector, got it at a Phil Suling show in the seventies, but was also a, K a JFK guy. So there's mm -hmm. a cover that spoke to a political guy, a comic book guy, an art collector, uh, all wrapped into one. Mm -hmm. Well, that's uh, you know, when, when you have the breadth of products that you're auctioning off for so long, I mean, that's, that's how you cultivate the, you know, that cross pollination and people and what people might collect. I think that's uh that is an advantage you have over the other auction houses that solely focus on art or art and comics. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, and the, uh, the Avengers page uh, from 189 by John Byrne. This one went for $5,200. So almost, uh, uh, well, two and a half times the the high estimate on this one. I remember this one. Everybody loved the last panel, right? Right. Get Hawkeye in there. That's 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 great. But that's right where you know to me in this market, that's pretty much where it should be. Um, you know what? Yeah, my buddy gave me a beating, uh, a verbal beating, anyways. About I, I said I figured this would go for thirty eight hundred. It's like no, this five grand for sure. Vintage right. burn. No one's getting rid of them, and everybody wants to stockpile them. I said, well, silly me. Well, yeah, it's a, it's beautiful, and it's it's the iconic burn style from the era. So I, I absolutely see the appeal and I can see the fact that I was wrong because you're the, you're now the fourth person to t tell me I was wrong in that case. So yeah, but Sean, just you that bottom panel and then what, you know, so it really, that's the X factor that you don't know how much are they going to like that one particular pose yes. and obviously a lot. Yes. <clears throat> right. But you, even if you take that out, you know, the starting point, you know, for a, a, a burn Avengers page would still be, you know, closer to three, even if it was just all talking heads and had no Avengers on it. Yeah, and, so, and no style coming off. Right. You know what I mean? Like I'm talking about Hawkeye style. The, but yeah, you throw the Hawkeye in here and it changes everything coming off yep. the page. Mm -hmm. Yeah, gone are the days when a page like this is going to go for less than a thousand. But the thing is, it's, it's like it, it really wasn't that long ago. Like you know, we we do you know think about it. It really was like four or five years ago where this page would have been a nine hundred dollar page. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, it's just kind of where things are at right now. I mean, the thing is, they're just harder to come by, right? I mean, how often do they come up? And everybody wants to get an example uh, of, uh, you know, there's a lot of people who want a burn example from all of the major titles that he worked on. So when an Avengers piece comes up there, you know, you're going to have quite a few people that, that want to, you know, that are going to that are going to be players for that piece. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah, this came from a, a longtime consigner. He's been giving us art. Pretty much every auction uh, he goes through his collection. He's been happy with this for, I'm going to say, eight, ten auctions, if not more. Uh, this one is, he held this one back. He was, he was uh, for a while, he loved this page. And he was, uh, I do usually hear from him. He's finally ready to, you know, to let it go. It's painful. It hurts. But uh, he, he was very, very thrilled, very happy with the result, Good. obviously, because it went well above the estimate. So, yeah. All right, so we got a Sal Buscema Marvel team up. Oh, yeah, the one with the Deathlock on it. This one went for well, Deathlock's pretty popular, so this one's uh, just yeah, over great. the high end estimate. Yeah, 5200. Yeah, that last panel is just mm -hmm. is awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's a great page. First panel is awesome, too. Yeah, they are all awesome. Yeah, that's great. Hmm. Yeah, I've got to check and see if people are adding these on onto calf. They need to they need to get them up on the site. 
that happens a lot with auctions, not just us <laughs> in general. Like it disappears. Should we know. try to like offer a uh, some sort of incentive from Hakes? If you, <laughs> if you put your art on calf, we'll give you. Put your uh, art on calf. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'll, I'll have to think of something to uh, to for incentive for that. Yeah. Well, you, you know, you'd laugh. I mean, I I still run into people. That, you know, okay, in the last two years, you know, before pre-pandemic, I would I'll still run into people and mention calf, and they're like, "What's calf?" You know, when you're talking to an art collector, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah. so it's weird. You know, I mean, it's. Uh, you know, there are some people that don't really use the internet too much, and uh, it's it's shocking. But you know. after after uh, fifty five years, people still say who are Hake sometimes. So it. So that, you understand, right? We, we apparently yeah. understand. Yes. Yeah. You would think everybody just should know it, right? I mean, at that point, but mm-hmm. uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I'm sure twenty years from now, I'll still be having that same conversation with with uh, a collector. You know, what is calf? So, it boggles uh, my good. mind, Bill, because uh, it, to me, it's 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 like walking up to a girl in 2008. Hey, what's your MySpace? When you find an art collector, what's your cat? It's the yeah. immediate question. That's true. You, you've actually been able to walk up to a girl and she didn't run away? <laughs> I didn't have this mess. I had, <laughs> I had uh, exactly. my sex appeal. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Uh, let's see. We got only got about four minutes here, so I want to show a couple more pieces, and I do want to make sure that we get a chance to talk about consigning before we leave as well, because I uh, I don't want to omit that. But so what what we got here? We had another. Uh, this was the Don Newton Avengers Annual page. This one exceeded expectations by uh, many many. What is it? Almost four times. Yeah. So good good one there. It is a great comment about cash should advertise and hakes. Let's make that work. We can put it out in the art section, no problem. Yes, yeah, do absolutely. it. That'd be sweet. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. No, do it. We can talk. I, 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 hey, everybody should be using CAF. I don't understand it. But yeah, this is a nice page. You know what's cool about this, too, is it's like, hey, I have a Don Newton Hawkeye. I'm like, what do you mean? I see, <laughs> no, Marvel. That's cool. Right. Same thing with that Daredevil. True. Uh, what do we got here? Oh, then those. Oh, well, see, we made it to the end. The, the color guides you guys have sent me. I mean, these are pr- some pretty strong prices. I mean, uh, this is a the two complete stories. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, the one Green Lantern seventy nine complete color guides uh, went for fifty four hundred dollars. I mean, that's that's pretty strong. Color guides are are you know, it, it's an alternative to getting the original art, and it's still a pretty cool item, especially on these vintage pieces. You know, I mean, it's they they are pretty cool. Well, if you like color guides, all I will say is stay tuned. Correct, Sean? That's indeed correct, sir. I'm very excited. Now, I'm personally, I'm a huge fan. I remember the day Berkey pulled out, and it, it's he pulls stuff out of his closet, and you're like, how much stuff is in your magic closet, man? So he brings out the he pulls out this stack of color guides, and like this came from John Romita's personal collection. He starts rifling through them, and I had never seen a color guide in person before, and the fact that a lot of them were, they had cuts out of the, the art to make edits. It, it, I just love seeing the editorial process take shape, mm-hmm. let alone the fact that it was touched by one of the three main artists on the book. But the I love the fact that it shows the production history. I, I, I've been a big fan of them. I remain a big fan of them, and I'm, I'm kind of excited. And yet, also, it's bittersweet to see the the pricing evolve away to the point where I'm like, you know, is, is this for color guides, what 2015 was for art, where it's like, it's still the ground floor. I better get it in while I can, because eventually it's going to get to the point where I can't get them anymore. Right. I love them. And it was, it was great to see this. That was, that was a price that pleasantly surprised me. It was right in line with what uh, a few years ago, the days of future past stories were going for. Uh, mm-hmm. And it just speaks to the market as a whole. Yeah. Five times what you were expecting, mm-hmm. but they are cool. I've seen several color guides at Berkey's as well. And, uh, you know, I even, I own, I own a couple, believe it or not, some burn X-Men color guides. So yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a collector in them as well. Right on. So, Hey, before we, uh, call it, call it a night here, um, what should we say about consignments? I mean, what's the best way to contact you guys for information about how to consign for the next auction in just under four months? Um, uh, we have, there's uh was it art at hakes.com comic art at hakes.com comic art at hakes.com comic art at hakes.com is the email to reach out to for anything relating comic art you can email me if we've ever spoken net at a convention that's a m kelly at hakes.com 
hakes at hakes.com. Uh, you can message us through Facebook, Instagram, just we'll, we'll figure it out, but we are getting our next auction ready. It's going to end in, in July, the week after San Diego comic-con. Mm. That is our last push for the auction. There will be a major push for the auction at San Diego comic-con, but between now and then now and the middle, middle to end of May is, uh, is our gathering. Yeah. We'd, we'd love to have it by May so we can really promote it well yeah. and give it what yeah. it deserves from yeah. marketing side. Yeah. And contact us. We'll go over the, the rates. You know, we, we are very competitive as you will find out. Just remember hakes.com. You go there, it will direct you where you need to go. And Kelly or Sean will happily take care of you. Yep. Yeah. That's it. All right. right and we will guys. Be a little giant, little giant show coming up soon. Sean will be um, yeah. taking consignments there as well. I'm looking forward to Jason's show. I'm really looking forward to it. Where is that at? New Hampshire. New Hampshire. New Hampshire? Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Little Giant. Never. Never heard of it. Make it happen. Looks right. awesome. I got to get out more. <laughs> well, hey, listen, Alex. Uh, it was great meeting you. Great, uh, you, of course, uh, Kelly and Sean having you on on again. And uh, I know we'll we'll be doing a preview later, uh, well, in another four months for the next auction. I'm looking forward mm -hmm. to doing that. But if there's anything I can do in the meantime to help you guys out, you know, I'm always happy to send out uh, consignment related emails for you. Any, anything like along those lines, you just let me know how I can help. And, uh, oh, Todd's Todd's in the audience as well. He's hey, Todd. In, Todd, Todd, you're, you're going to be in the hot seat next time, Todd. <laughs> <laughs> and thanks Dino, for the questions. Everybody else. Thanks for the yeah, questions. Yeah, thanks, thanks, everybody. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, uh, so as everybody knows, I'm going to be ending this show and going right over to another one at, uh, in three minutes. So, uh, you know, another episode of bill doesn't sleep. That is exactly what it is. I've got uh, another show on Friday, and now I've got a show on Saturday to do, too. So <laughs> I'm glued to this seat for another two days. So, uh, all right. Well, again, thanks. I, I really yeah. appreciate it. And, uh, you know, uh, we'll talk about that advertising. You never know. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks, Bill. All right, guys. See Have a good guys. night, everybody, and see you in a few minutes.